Howdy folks and welcome to another episode of the Snowies Camping Show. You are here with Ben and Lauren as usual and I just felt like um, for those watching on YouTube that when the music started I was sort of looking at you and then did this like swift That's turn to the camera. I felt like I did this. <laughs> yeah, like a news anchor. It's rapid like, oh, quick, we're on. Hello yeah. and good morning. Right. Um, anyway. anyway, so wherever you're listening, whether that be YouTube as we've just mentioned or uh, where you're listening to your podcast, don't forget to subscribe um, and also don't forget to jump onto our Facebook group, The Snowy's Camping Show, Speaking where you of can the Facebook get group, involved. If you jump in on all the conversation, but have you bought your orange Crocs yet? <laughs> So for those of you who may not be in the Facebook group already, I uh, was going to get some Crocs because everyone's been talking about Crocs lately and Crocs when you're camping and, you know, and I've decided to bite the bullet and do it, but I couldn't decide on a colour. So I was like, oh, I'll let the Facebook group decide. And it's unanimously pretty much going to orange now. I'm going to you've, leave it. You've you've said, oh no, I've got to buy orange Crocs, but you chose the three colours. To I put did out choose there. the three colours, and I don't mind the orange. I also don't mind the blue, and I also don't mind uh, oxygen blue, papaya. I don't know, whatever. The three colours there, I chose because they were like my final three. And are you going to get the leopard skin? And then skin it just occurred to me. Platforms for the office. No. <laughs> you said you would. No, it was a joke. <clears throat> Anyway, anyway so, that's not what we're talking about today. Um, I'm going to let it go for another week, I reckon, and then um, go with those final numbers. But orange is right. ahead, odds on for orange. Jump in and put your votes in. It's still up there. You've got a poll on the Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, Snowy's there is a Facebook poll on the group. Facebook yep. group. So anyway. um, last week we talked about keeping cosy when you're camping yep. and how to sort of keep your personal person warm and enjoy your winter trips. And with the rain this week, um, heaps of rain, heaps of rain in South Australia. Yeah. I know other states have been getting smashed for a while now. but yeah, we've, we probably can't really complain. No, we can't. But I reckon last night the rain started pretty late and by the time we went to bed we'd already had six meals. So like, And this morning it was hectic. So. It was about 20 mils in my little weather station by this morning. So yeah, right. It was about 20 mils overnight. So we're getting so. a lot of rain. It's our first real proper rain for a while and it's settling in for the week. And yep. I think with that um, happening most places around the country, there's been a lot of questions coming in from um, campers out there about how to increase their overall space when they're camping in rubbish weather. Yep. Um, especially for people who potentially have those smaller sort of four, six, maybe even eight person tents where if you're camping as a couple or as a family, there's really no living space in your tent. Mm. Um, a lot of people would have cancelled their camping trips. Yeah. Like, I mean the weather we had overnight is pretty serious, but um, mild rain, really don't need to to cancel your trip if you've got – we've got a few options that we'll, yeah. we'll run through today. Um, our favourite one – We'll save to last. We save unanimously to, yeah. decided that, yep, that's the best option. So, so um, But I think, yeah, I think for me personally, um, even if you're sort of expecting a day of heavy rain, you don't need to cancel your trip. Like, And it can be quite fun yeah. to be out camping in the weather and things like that if yep. you're so inclined. So we have covered an episode on um, shelters in summer, like beach shades and sh- summer shelters, which I think was episode 38. Um, and we also talked a little bit about waterhead ratings with Zampire, which is episode mm-hmm. 16. So I'm just running through a couple of episodes for you. Waterhead ratings being um, how waterproof certain fabrics are. Correct. Because you can put something over you, but if it doesn't have a, a waterhead rating or isn't waterproof, it's not going to keep you dry. Yeah. And then in uh, episode eight, way back when, mm. we um, – discussed sort of dealing with unexpected wind and rain when you're camping. Yep. So there's a couple of other episodes that you might want to look into more if you want more information around, you know, camping in wet weather yep. and things like that. But, but this is more about packing. When you're going out, you know yeah. it's going to rain yeah. and you're setting up your campsite to be livable in the rain. Yeah. So you know you're going to set up for the weekend and it's going to be drizzly for the whole weekend. Yeah. And you've got to make that comfortable. Absolutely. And I think it's probably fair to say as well that this is more relevant for tent campers because people yep. with camp trailers or caravans obviously have a bit more sheltered space already. Yep. But I think first things first is planning your trip if you don't have an additional shelter option to take with you. Going somewhere like a, a national park, um, caravan park or or like bush campsites or things like that, we'll have 
existing shelters. You know what I mean? So they're essentially yep. going to be bomb proof. Yep. Um, and I've seen a few people in my time of camping who have done exactly this thing. Maybe they've got like a small hatch or something like that. They have a small tent. Um, so they pick a place that has a shelter and they take a couple of extra tarps yep. and you can often easily do a DIY rig up with some rope or, you know, whatever, um, straps or whatever of yep. a tarp in these shelters to block off extra rain and, and so give you yourself mean, a, on the, using the, po- the poles of the shelter just to put a tarp on yeah, temporarily use, yep. to stop the, the, you know, on the prevailing weather side just yeah, to give definitely. you a bit more shelter. Yeah, I yep. think, you know, like we have um, forestry campsites here and up in the hills and someone did that with two tarps and they were camped there all weekend in yeah, okay. horrific weather but happy as Larry. I guess the only consideration there is other campers as well, making yeah. sure you're not taking over the whole spot. But the, That's true. there's a lot of really cool shelters now which have got – Usually there's a couple of tables in there and probably yeah. two or three barbecues and cookers if you're in a big campsite. So there's usually enough space to facilitate quite a few people. And if you yeah. put a, a, a wind shelter up that's going to benefit everyone, then I guess maybe be open to the idea that you someone can else share might, your space, yeah. Yeah, might um, benefit from that as well. And that's often good fun. You meet your camping neighbours and yeah. have a good chat about things. And Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so next option is extensions of your existing tent. Yes. So uh, I probably will mention here that the, by, a lot of tents um, will have an awning or, or some sort of awning to create shade, right? Mm-hmm. They're not always the best for heavy rain unless you pitch them differently such that the rain can run away. So I think of the common instant up tents, for example. Yeah. Um, a lot of rain, that water's going to pull in, in that awning there. So you've got to be mindful about how you set it up. Don't mm-hmm. rely on it for heaps and heaps of rain because the weight's going to maybe collapse the tent. Yeah. But tents like um, what I'm thinking, oh, like the Oz tent RV tents, you can mm-hmm. get extensions to go on the side. The Black Wolf Turbo tents, you can get extender awnings to make that yeah. space at the front. And there's a bit more structure in those. You put poles in them to give it a bit more structure to allow that water to run. Like up they're often you, peaked. Peaks, yeah. Uh, yeah, peaks so the water runs down and, and off. It doesn't pull anywhere. I think even though like a, a good – point you made just then is that um with some of the tents like your Austral Loomis, your Coleman Instant Up, those styles, often the awning that you can use with the tent is also the vestibule vestibule, vestibule. oh my God, this word. Vestibule. The vestibule f- door flap as well. And yep. if the weather's really terrible, you often when you're going to bed or overnight or whatever, you want to zip that down. Yep. And it can't always be practical for you to have this flap up as your awning and then have to take it down and zip it up. Whereas tents like your Black Wolf Turbo Tent, your RV tent, things like that, they have those awnings that exist separate to a sealed, mm. um, <clears throat> properly waterproofed enclosed door. Yeah, so the so, door is waterproof, yeah. Yeah, and then you can also get walls. I don't know if you mentioned walls because I did admittedly zone out a tiny little bit. I thought you did. Before you when looked you a were bit talking. fake, but, but yeah, walls are yeah, walls. the same principle as yep. the, the shelter, putting the tarp on the side. Yeah, um, and so you can get optional extension walls and sometimes often uh, flooring as well. Yeah. Um, so they they can be a good option. And if it is, if you are somebody who's sort of looking at wanting to get a tent um, and you do like to camp year-round, that would be something to take into consideration Yep. Is is what extension options or accessories are available to you in the future? Yep, and just ask yourself the awning that's on the tent. Am I willing to take it down every night? And does it really cater for that much rain? Yeah. Can I set it up with the poles lower so it runs off? Yeah. And if you set it up with the poles lower, you end up with less head space. There's all considerations like that. So yep. probably, I think you touched on it. It's probably better for those um, tents that don't they have like a waterproof door to use that for sun. Um, shelter, yeah. and maybe light rain shelter. Yeah. But if the weather gets bad, you really want to be able to zip them down to keep your sleeping space dry, stormproof sleeping space, and then add uh, a shelter like we're talking about here to yeah. your setup so that you've got a sturdy waterproof space to cook in just a living space yep. and, and use walls and things for that. Yeah, definitely. So the gazebo option is obvious choice. Obvious choice. <laughs> yep. But I think. The reality of it, and I know we've talked about gazebos before, and I think uh, I have, I'm not sure off the top of my head what episode number it was, but we did an episode on gear you don't need camping, and I think you and I both very controversially yep. said that a gazebo was gear that you don't need yep. camping. Um, 
And I think a lot of people responded to that and were like, actually, my gazebo is great. And I think that that's amazing for people that love their gazebo. But I think another sort of common element to that is people who purchase a gazebo and then they don't end up taking it half the time because it's a lot bigger, a lot heavier, a lot sort of bulkier, not as straightforward to set up or like it's a two-person job or, you know, and sometimes it's just easier to leave that stuff at home. It's also Um, they're not so good in the really bad weather. If it's rain, they're not too bad. Some of them aren't really that waterproof either. Um, Yeah, that would be the other thing I would just want to point on with gazebos is that not – every company that does a gazebo, especially those accordion ones or those Mm. sort of quad foldy type gazebos, not every company that makes those actually does waterproof testing Mm. on their canopies and stuff. So even though it might be sort of waterproofed or water resistant fabric and even though it might have seam sealing in it, they haven't actually physically done a waterhead rating test. Yep which means that they can't actually provide you with a guarantee that it is waterproof. Mm. And so I think a lot of people do purchase those gazebos expecting them to keep them protected when unfortunately they don't. It's a reasonable expectation though, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I do. If you're buying something like that, you would think you go um, uh, sun and rain. Is, is what you're going to protect yourself from. Because what so, else would you need protection from? Yeah. So if you do definitely need that water protection, just check for that waterhead rating and yep. make sure you're getting something that, that does have that waterhead rating on The it. other thing that I wonder just about that though is whether or not there's a, there's a resistance or a hesitance to provide a guarantee of waterproofness with those kind of structures because they're not a fully enclosed thing like a tent. Do you know yep. what I mean? And even if you have um, your gazebo up and you have walls up, it's still not a sealed structure. And so therefore any potential claims around water leaking or water getting mm. in can't be proven that it's a failure of the product itself as opposed to water just getting in through mm. the open spaces. And so I wonder if because there is that grey area there, it it's, it's just easier for manufacturers to not provide a waterproof Maybe. Guarantee sounds a bit Maybe. silly or pedantic, doesn't it? But we we do have people, yeah. Who said it does. My gazebo it. leaks, but there's no walls or anything on it, and you know they're, they're not. If you put a wall on it, even then, there's still gaps. Yeah, it definitely. Like you from gaps near the poles, gaps where it joins. Like, that's right. And so, even though sort of a lot of common sense can be used in those areas, I think maybe that grey area is what creates that hesitance of yep. make of you know claiming that they're waterproof. Yeah. So we're um, probably we're referring mainly to those concertina ones there as well. Yep. And the issue I have with those two is there's a lot of metal in it. They're quite heavy. Make sure you peg it down properly because if you don't and it bends, you can't fold them back up again and you've got this mangled, twisted mess of metal to try and carry yeah. home with you. So I have literally seen one be sort of sucked up by like an invisible whirly whirly or I've whatever. I've seen a whole lot, row of them. They're all cable oh. tied together and they just peeled over. <gasps> no with way. This gust of yeah, wind. that's so, crazy. Yeah, but the better options though, and mm-hmm. I'll probably jumping in before no, you go for it. Um, well, event 14 is something that Coleman's done for a long time. I don't, it's more of a beach shelter. I mm. don't actually know what the waterhead rating is on it, but it's, I do, feel, do you know I feel it's waterproof? it is waterproof. Yep. I feel like it comes with like a, a, a thousand or a 1500 or maybe 450. For the walls, yeah, yeah, okay. I but think it come. Right. It actually has had a waterhead rating on it, and it's kind of a better design. It's a dome shape, so it sheds the water better. The sides come down a little bit lower, so it offers a bit more water protection. But mm. um, a step above that, even more, are the air shelters. Yeah, the Zempire. We we'll talk about Zempire again. We keep mentioning Zempire, but yeah, they're really good um, options for just the design for wind shedding mm-hmm. the rain, um, and also for anchoring it down. They've got nice sturdy guy ropes and, and, Definitely. and they're flexible. If So if you've got wind and rain, yeah, it moves a bit. They are. Oh, they do come with a really excellent waterproof rating. So okay. for people who usually would contact us and say they need a shelter and it needs to be waterproof, definitely have a look at the Zampire ones because they do come with really great waterproofing um, yep. or waterhead ratings on them. And I do know we touched on this, I think, um, we did an episode on on the air tents and air yep. pole technology um, with, also with Zampire. Um And I think, you know, we have said that they're a really great option in wind and things like that. But there was mm. a bit of feedback from that episode of people who have had shelters that did fold in wind mm-hmm. um, and they did have to take them down. And I think it's probably worth 
sort of doing a little asterisk here to say that, um, yes, whilst they are definitely your best option in wind and will tolerate a lot of conditions, it's not to say that they're a hundred percent foolproof because you yeah. are camping after all, and it is a transportable shelter. It's not a fixed structure. So, um, yeah, when- there may be times where you might have to drop your shelter. Yep. Someone did make a really good comment that their shelter is pegged in place and when they know that the weather's kicking off really, really badly, they just run out and they pop the air tubes and they just inflate it and it all just sort Deflate of falls it, yeah. into place and yep. just f- sits on the ground and then the weather passes, they just three minutes they've pumped it up again and yeah. it's all good to go. That's a great idea. It's common sense too. I mean these shelters are large with big sides on it so they're yeah. going to catch, catch the wind. So rain usually is an issue. Mm-hmm. But if it's lots of wind, then you do need to have yeah, use some common sense. Yeah, and I think the the sort of event fourteen um, and the Zempire air shelters they're often sort of three point five four four point five meters square, so they're a huge amount of space, and mm-hmm. especially with a couple of walls in place, more than enough living living area. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. for a family or a, a group camping situation. The only other thing we mentioned here is just considering. Uh, the pack size and space yeah. in your vehicle because if you're taking one of these shelters, you're basically taking another tent with you. So if you've already got a bulky tent, you're now going to have to allow space to put a bulky shelter in yeah. there as well if you're going down that path. The air shelters sort of bum- bundle up a bit and so do the Event 14 style shelters. They bundle up like a large tent but the big framed ones, like those concertina quad fold type ones, they pack quite you know, small but long. Yeah, so, so you need to take that into consideration yep. for that as well. So, yeah, just if, if you do want to go for a, a gazebo, um, yeah, consider pack size, overall weight, um, and actual waterhead rating of the gazebo yep. you're looking at. Yep. We're on to our favourite option, yeah, which this is, is the balance of everything. My favourite. Underrated but <laughs> actually probably one of the simplest options. It was, I feel like when I was a kid, it was the option. Yeah. And I think maybe because, you know, new fandangled gazebos and stuff went around then. Yeah. So it's old school. So we're going sort of back to the future here. Yeah, but it's reliable and that's just to use a tarp, a tarp shelter. Tarp shelter. Which is, there's no, you can't just point your finger towards, you know, where do I buy a tarp shelter? You can make a tarp shelter out of just a tarp if you like, or there's mm. there's custom made ones that are shaped really well to shed the water. Yeah. You've got your own heavy we duty sort of custom made a, version. Yep. There's lightweight versions. Um, mm-hmm. There's no one hard, fast way to make a tarp shelter. You just need a waterproof fabric of some sort with a way to put poles in that and then like guy ropes and pegs. Mm-hmm. Eyelets, yeah, and guy ropes and pegs. Yep. And you can put that up anywhere, however you want. It can be half wall, half shelter, all shelter. Like there's there's – Lots of variations in that. There are lots of variations and there's lots of different kinds of tarps out there as well. It's not um, like the particular tarp that we use is, I know I've mentioned it before, but it's a quite a heavy duty canvas tarp. So mm-hmm. it is quite heavy when it's packed up, but it packs like a, a big square pancake um, and, you know, just tucks in out of the way easily. And then we've got big poles that we've had to sort of, make ourselves because of the weight of the canvas because I'm pretty sure it's eight meters by six meters. Yeah. Which is and it's a it's an actual truck tarp. We bought it from a right um yeah like a transport company so sort of supply website or something like that. Yep. Um but I think I was saying to you before it's literally bomb proof. Yep. And we've been away with three other families and all happily fit under there eating dinner, playing, whatever, in the rain. And that would be five adults and, you know, at least ten kids. How big is it? Eight by six. Okay. So it's quite large. And we've had, you know, times where we've it's been um, one of, I can think, the trip from hell that we went on, which will go down infamously in my memory. But that was – on top of a cliff and it was so windy right. and we just really didn't pick up. I was like, oh, look, this is so beautiful and like scenic, like yeah. amazing. I could paint this. And then three o'clock came and it was just yeah. like. You've just gone for the Instagram shot rather than a proper campsite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I learned my lesson. But in that situation, we just dropped the shelter sides down and pegged it straight into the ground yep. and it was like on, on our A-frame and it, you know, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, there's, it has that versatility there. Yeah. Um, 
So I'd say that, that's the heavy duty option. But how? how but you can you, do exactly the same thing with a lighter duty option. Yeah, do you know your, what I mean? Your option, though, if you compare that to say, um, well, let's say a, a, a Event fourteen or a or a air shelter, mm-hmm. um, inflatable air filled gazebo. Yeah. In terms of pack size and weight, is it comparable, or are you saying yours is <laughs> I ac- more? I, I mean, actually it, bearing in mind that obviously shelters a lot more people. Yeah. Than most of. I, I don't mentioned. know off the top of my head and I actually will find out because yeah. I think that's really interesting to know. Mm. The The poles w- that we have are actually wooden poles. They're mm. like long gum wood poles and then, but they're not super heavy and there's a, a one long one and four sort of shorter ones for the legs and they just bundle up on our roof rack. And then we have the – Galve steel sort of axle bracket things that go in the A-frames, which, you know, are smaller than a basketball each. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have the canvas tarp and then we have a bunch of guy ropes and mm. little sort of shorter awning pole type things for the edges. So it's, you know, it it's w- not It'd too, weigh a bit. But, it but would weigh is, a bit. This is a deluxe option and sort of suits your style of camping. Yeah, it's – and, you know, obviously there are times where we'll go camping and we won't bother to take it. But if we're going camping in the peak of summer and we know there's not going to be natural shade, we'll take it. If we go camping yep. in winter, it, we'll take it. Um, yeah. But you could create a lighter weight option by using – Definitely al- al- lighter weight options And just a poly tarp. Yep. I'd probably say maybe um, for probably maybe six alloy – extendable poles and a spreader pole so you can at least create some yeah. sort of a, a, a peak so the water runs off yep. and a decent sized type you could set something up the more poles the better because you create more head space um, more stability um, so you can set it up pretty simply that way or um, we, we're talking about some um, Austral do a camper, camper fly, fly and a hiker fly hiker yep. fly is a lot smaller than the camper fly and they're super lightweight I mean I'm not sure I'm pretty sure they do I have a waterhead rating, although I could be I wrong there. Do, yeah. But I have heard of lots of people using that in rainy weather yeah. and it holds up fine. But that's really quite lightweight, packed super small, a couple of, you know, Bigfoot aluminium, you know, say super big Bigfoot aluminium yep. awning poles. You potentially might not even need a spreader bar, but if you are going to make a peak, definitely just even having a spreader bar in your kit is not a big deal. No, it makes a difference. I've tried to do it before with just poles and pulling it tight, but you always yeah. end up with that saggy bit in the middle and the spreader bar just lifts it up, gives you head space and creates that obvious peak so the water runs away. Yeah. I think for me the versatility that a tarp shelter gives you and the options that you have to be able to change your setup in a mm-hmm. matter of minutes if the weather changes or the conditions change or from one day to another, yep. it just makes it unbeatable compared to other options. Yep. And I think that potentially the only downside from that that I can that I can think of is that you need more than one person to set it up. It's a bit more setup time. Whereas your other, other options will – Potentially, you know, you could in a pinch do a one person setup of those without an issue. Yeah. I always carry a tarp, and that's for ground cover, windbreak, shelter. Mm. And recent times, it was actually for um, sun rather than rain, but just yeah. attached that sort of draped across the front of my, the two eyelets lined up exactly with the, the spigots of my RV5 tent. So I just yeah. hooked it on there and then parked my vehicle a little way away and just cool. used some clips and attached it to the and vehicle. And then it's, yeah. And it created this big tunnel of, of shade. Yeah. It was nothing fancy. There were bits of fabric hanging off, but it's it was awesome for the hot weather we were in. We just needed yeah. a big shady spot to hang out in. Yeah. Um, but that also was a ground sheet for a shower in a dusty place that we had and you know it, yeah it's it's goes much further having a tarp probably not your tarp but having a yeah. tarp goes uh, further than just shelter there's heaps of versus whole options but definitely yeah, but i mean like if have- you were hypothetically wanting to get a smaller tarp you could still get that in a really good quality canvas like if you were wanting oh, yeah. to get a smaller tarp that was not going to fail in rain and was going to be bomb proof you can get canvas tarps good quality canvas tarps mm. in a whole range of different sizes but then you know you can get poly tarps you can get nylon t- like you know there's lots yeah. of lots it, of different options out especially there especially if it's just for two people you don't need a massive tarp or even a family of four if you've already got a good awning mm. any tent like the Austin RV tents with a peak in it yeah. At a, at a, I don't know, four by four meter 
or I'm tarp to that and you've got heaps more space. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, tarp shelters, you heard it here first. Bring them back. Yeah. They've always been around. They're just – they're not the fanciest option. They look like a lot of – you don't work. really they see don't them have, anymore. Do well, you know what I mean? they don't have this fancy pop-up thing like press, you know, push here and bam, it, it's up. And that's all really good. But when the weather gets really bad mm. – those things have limitations. Yeah. I always love when people put product reviews on our website and they send in their photos and they've got these wicked tarp shelters and I'm like, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> anyway, old school. Love the tarp shelter. Get on it. The only other thing probably that we haven't got on these lists and I imagine someone's going to be like, what about awnings? And, yes, awnings oh, yeah. um, are, a, uh, are an option as well. But yeah. we were sort of thinking more of – Tent campers who potentially don't have roof rack systems or larger four-wheel drives or the ability yep. to sort of have awnings on them. The consideration um, with awning is the gap between the awning and the car. Yeah. You always kind of think I've got it attached to the car and I've got this much shelter out from the car. But then the rain comes in from the car side and suddenly you've got that gap because the awning's not sealed to the car, yeah. right, and you get that bit of rain in there. So. Just, and I think it's a also consideration. a consideration as well if you're tent camping. You're not always going to have your car positioned in relation to your tent in the best way it That's needs right. to be for that awning to give you realistic extended area yeah. from your tent. So. I've taken my awning off. I don't use it anymore. I know you said that a few times. Is it ain't ever? Am I, I repeating so. myself too much? Well, to me anyway, okay. I don't know so, about the podcast. Only because I don't put it up very often, mainly yeah. because I think well, I might drive somewhere later and I can't be bothered putting it up and then taking it down. Yeah. So I just took it off and I haven't missed it. Yeah, right. So, Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks awesome. for tuning in again this happy Monday. Um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your week. And again, don't forget to jump on to the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Subscribe wherever you're listening. And we'll see you again next week. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Catch you later.